Yes, lads, what is going on? Welcome to Season 5, Episode 4 of the Troy Sports Pod. In this episode, we are joined by the new and two-time 800 meter national champion, John Fitzsimons. Um, unfortunately, at the weekend, I didn't get the opportunity to interview John as he was really busy with the presentation and all the races rolled over really quickly. And of course, he took the win at the Morton Games, um, I think two or three weeks prior to the national championship. So when I didn't get to interview him at either of those events, I knew I had to get him on the podcast to have a chat. And I'm really, really happy that I did because John is um, an amazing runner, but he's also a really, really great guy to talk to. Of course, like I said, he placed first in the national championships last weekend in a pretty stacked field that consisted of Andrew Cosgren, who's been in amazing form this year. John and I talk about everything from his early career to now that he's heading over to Budapest to the World Championships um, in a couple of weeks that are kicking off on the 19th of August. He is continuing his training at home. He's now heading over to a training camp. So John and I talk about his current training and as well as everything he's been through, like placing third in the European um, Indoor Championships in 2017. So John has a re- has had a really really great career up until this point. We dabble into some injuries that he has suffered with as well, and um, but really really can't wait for you guys to listen to this episode of the podcast, and can't wait to see John race over in the eight hundred meters in Budapest. So keep an eye out for John when you're watching the races over there. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of the channel and of the podcast, Mini Athletics. Um, Noel Fergus from Mini Athletics has been on the podcast before talking about everything Mini Athletics is trying to do over here in Ireland. Noel is the Irish ambassador for Mini Athletics that are officially based over in the UK. The links to Mini Athletics Instagram and Noel's Instagram and the Mini Athletics website are all down in the description below. Mini Athletics are currently based in Dundalk, Drada and Swords. But are always looking to always looking to reach new places um, and always looking for new coaches and new facilities. They provide birthday parties and um, fun days and um, days out in schools and of course their classes that take part in Dundalk in Dundalk Drogheda and Swords. It's a great way to get your kids involved in athletics and for them to learn new skills like jumping, running, throwing and just uh, getting teamwork done with other kids as well. So like I said, all links can be found down in the description below. But without further ado, I hope you all enjoy this episode of the podcast with John Fitzsimons. That's right. So we are joined with John Fitzsimons. John, since last weekend, you have become the new 800 meter national champion as well. You are heading over to Budapest in a couple of weeks a lot has happened over the past few weeks for you but i suppose we're gonna we're gonna go from the beginning and, and work all the way up to to the present day in terms of your sporting and, and athletics career but i suppose i won't do you justice if you want to take it away there for a second and, and give all the listeners at home a brief introduction yeah sure uh thanks for having me killian so like you said my name is john fitzsimons uh, i'm a middle distance athlete specializing in the 800 meters uh, from Kildare Town, running for Kildare AC. Um, yeah, I've been running from the age of six uh, with the local club here and just been uh, been going for the last 20 odd years now. And yeah, I'm after making my first World Champs team coming up in a couple of weeks. So I'm really looking forward to that. Definitely, definitely. Um, now, it must be amazing knowing that you have secured a spot and, and are heading over. We'll get into, I suppose, the, um, <clears throat> your preparations and your plans for Budapest. John, are you a 800 meter advocate? Tell us about, I suppose, the, the history of you and the 800 meter event. Is it strictly the, the 800? You won't really go go up more above that? Um, yeah, I would consider myself a bit of a one trick pony now, to be honest. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I ran the 400 a bit for a couple of years, just kind of under 17, under 18. But um, yeah, like I was decent, but it was evident I wouldn't be a uh, uh, like kind of world class or make the kind of strides in the sport I wanted to so I moved back up to the 800 and I've been there since um yeah to be honest I'd like to try out other events a bit more but um normally if I'm stepping on the track it's to try to improve my world ranking or attempt to run a standard or something for a championship so the last two years I've been really focused on the the 800 I don't think I've really dabbled at all and 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 with your history in the I suppose 400 meters in in I suppose the earlier times and 
in your athletics career would the speed aspect of the 800 meters be where your strengths lie is as you don't like maybe i've seen a post as well on your instagram that the 1500 meters is 700 meters too long and um, would the speed aspect of of the 800 meters where be where your strength lies yeah i don't know like i wouldn't consider myself to be an overly quick athlete like there's a lot of 800 guys that would be probably quicker than me over 400 but um i i, I really do think i'm just built to run the 800 like uh i'm very economical around it kind of 25 26 200 pace and i can handle a lot of that volume and kind of workouts and stuff so i think my strength is just um that that pace just suits me really well you know that kind of way definitely and and when did it become evident that you were you were i suppose like you said built for the 800 and and you made the the sacrifice and that that transition over to fully focusing on that to um, like you said, work up the, the the world rankings and run faster times in the event. Yeah. Um. So it was really my first year, or my last year as a junior was the first year I really focused on the eight hundred. Um, I I had a couple of kind of injuries and stuff leading into that year and even during that year. So I I suppose from the year or from twenty seventeen onwards, I've really specialised in the eight hundred. Um. And then even after that that year, 2017, I was a junior. So after that year, the next couple of years weren't great. And I had a long stint uh, injured through COVID. So, um, yeah, I, I'd say the last three years especially have been pretty good to me. And I've kind of built on uh, just a good foundation kind of year on year. And I've been pushing on year on year. So that's nice. Um, and I'd like to probably get down a little bit quicker now hopefully in budapest and get down towards that uh paris qualifying time while i'm there that'd be ideal definitely tell us a little bit more about that that stint through covid because you know at the at the beginning of the pandemic people had nothing to do except for to train and, and get out the door instead of being trapped inside to get out and, and and most people all they could do was train so tell us a little bit more about that injury stint during covid yeah so like you said that was exactly what i was doing during covid i spent about four weeks like running basically twice a day every day and the, the volume was higher than it ever had been and the intensity is a bit lower because you know obviously you couldn't travel the tracks and stuff so you're doing lots of longer sessions on the road or uh, like i live right on the, the Curra race course here so i was doing a lot in the Curra and stuff and i'd been running through a fairly dodgy achilles and it just been getting worse and worse and um just coming out the end of the first lockdown there, we were starting to get access to the tracks again. So I was going up doing a couple of track sessions and they were just going horrendously. And my Achilles is in absolute ribbons. So um, I just called up my coach, Joe Ryan. I was like, look, Joe, I can't keep running through this. It's too sore. Like it was doable in the sense that like I could run as much as I wanted, but it was just like you're running on like, a six or seven or an eight out of ten pain like every day so um we just took a complete step backwards to try to get it right i was in with uh the institute there and ended up missing four months completely without running and missed out on like you know there was like a later nationals that year in 2020 like they ran it in september or whatever because the lockdown was gone so i missed that and missed that season um and then got back running kind of that winter and thankfully, like, I wouldn't say it's 100%, but it's it's basically 100%. It hasn't caused me any missed time since. So, um, yeah, in a, in a weird way, COVID was almost a blessing because I, I took that break knowing there's going to be no races and stuff. And it's probably the best thing I could have done for myself. And it's kept me healthy since. Yeah, the the, the Achilles for, for many runners, even myself, was it can be a, a huge, huge issue. And the pain that you felt was there was it kind of like a like a flaring up pain? Was there any chance of it, like an Achilles tear or, or or rupture? You know, if if you were to keep running on it. Um. Yeah, like that's always the risk. Um, I never had any tear in it or anything. Thankfully, it was just I think the fact that it, it got a bit kind of swollen and like generally annoyed and. Uh, I just kept training through it, but sure, you know, like, you know yourself, a runner's mindset, you just kind of keep going. If if it's possible to keep going, you're like, oh, it'll be fine. Like, yeah. But like, it, it just wasn't settling. It was getting slowly worse and worse. So uh, in the end, I had no choice but to stop. Like, Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and look, like you said, it, it was a blessing in disguise with, 
with no no races during COVID, and then you know the time you took out and um, is is you know staying with with you now where the the issue didn't get worse. Now you're able to run and um, the way you did last weekend and um yeah look sometimes you said it is important to take a step back but runners are 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 persistent and stubborn i suppose um, and, and sometimes they'll, they'll run through the pain um you're 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 heading over onto one of the biggest stages now in a few weeks time but take me back to the first time running in an irish fest at all i know there was the first time in 2017 where you ran in the european champs but it takes back to your first ever irish fest Okay, yeah, so I think my very first Irish vest would have been um, the Celtic Games in 2013, so I would have been under 16, and it's just like a small competition. Uh, it's like Ireland versus Wales versus Scotland, and um, they only do a handful of events. It's a real small team, especially at under 16 level, so I was lucky enough that the 800 was one of the events the year I was an under 16. Um, yeah, it was a real breakout year for me, because um god i'd never even won like a leinster's or anything leading up until uh being an under 16 and like i was second in leinster's that year in the whole lot and uh, i just absolutely sent it from the gun at the all ireland <laughs> and um won and oh geez i was absolutely shocked and like even my family and stuff were shocked it just oh, it wasn't like part of the playbook at all but yeah i won that and that earned me there, uh that first vest and then um from then, yeah, I had a couple of like went to them other kind of a couple of Celtic games and Syabs and stuff, and um, then my first kind of championships would have been the European Juniors in 2017. So, yeah, like like basically, they'd all been at uh, 800 as well. I think maybe one one of the schools champs or something was at 400, but uh, almost exclusively like making 800 or running 800s. Tell us from from that nationals that year where where you ended up winning that as well as you you, you weren't expected to win even like you said your family didn't even expect it to win did did you take a lot away from from that championships knowing that if if you commit yourself to a race it it can actually play out in in your favor. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and even just in general, like I wasn't taking running as seriously at that age. Uh, like I was still playing football and stuff um, when I won that, so. I suppose that was really the first race where I considered like, oh, maybe I could be good at this sport. And um, I think it was after that, that uh, summer, I, I gave up the football and said, I'd give running a good go. Um, and of course, got injured straight away because I <laughs> started <laughs> running away more. But um, yeah, really from then I decided like this is the sport I was going to give it a good go. And um, like my mom was the, the coach in the running club and stuff at the time. Uh, a lot of my family ran and stuff. So, like I kind of knew that was the way I was always going to go, but then, like it's a lot easier to make that decision when you're actually like going well and stuff. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. Then of of course you get a bit carried away and 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 you got injured. What was that injury like? Was that probably one of your first injuries in terms of running? Yeah, it was, and it was the Achilles as well. Like that was the first time I hurt my Achilles, and I'd just been on and off from then to be honest up until twenty twenty twenty. Like I, I had a couple of other injuries like but mainly they're all down around the kind of foot and ankle and like 99 percent of the time it was just the achilles flaring up again so um yeah i've been quite lucky with injuries to be honest and in general uh, like i like i said i had that long stint during covid with the achilles but outside of that like i've had very few like i've never had any serious like tears or ruptures or anything so like i would consider myself quite fortunate like with the, the career i've had so far and then you mentioned there Going over to your first Europeans in in twenty seventeen, how did how did that differ from just competing in Ireland and against you know the UK against England, Scotland and, and Wales? Going over on a European stage, what what was that mindset mindset shift like for you back in twenty seventeen? Oh, it was so exciting, man! It was unbelievable. Um, like the other guy who got selected for the eight hundred was also from Clare. Like not from the town, but like he would have been from County Clare, so I would have raced him the whole way up and stuff. That was Colonel Hayes. So it was so much fun to go over him because we were good friends and like we would have roomed together and stuff. Um but yeah, mindset wise, like to be honest, I'd be a real kind of relaxed guy up until I'm racing. Uh and then like when I get into the call room, like I may 
act nice and friendly with the guys, but in my head, I'm sitting there going like, Ugh, like. I get, I get real like kind of aggro as in like you don't deserve to beat me today like I've <laughs> I've trained so hard for this and all this so um yeah by the time I got over there sure I'm thinking I'm gonna win every race I'm in because it's, it's just the way I don't know it's probably a good way to think um but then sometimes you get a bit carried away in the races and stuff like uh but yeah so I was going into each round thinking like I can do this like I'll I'll get in I'll get stuck in I'll win it like and I made it through the rounds, made it into the final, which was a bit of a shock, really, because I was one of the slower guys in the field and uh, ended up scraping the bronze. But sure, with 100 meters to go, I was convinced I had the thing won, and then I <laughs> fell apart. And I barely held on the bronze. But um, yes, yeah, so that was the first like big kind of uh, achievement I had in the sport. Um, it's still probably my crowning moment, uh, to be honest, that for now. But uh, I think the world champs will trump it now when I get there, and hopefully run well. Definitely. Well, I suppose a, a bronze medal in your first European Championships is nothing to uh, to, to turn away at. Um, coming away with, with the bronze medal, you always seem to have a, a good mindset in, in terms of going into a race. You, the fact that you deserve to be there and, you know, no matter who's there and what the situation is, you, you do believe you can win. But actually getting a medal on a European stage when it actually happens, what was that like? Oh, it, it was so insane. It was crazy. Like my, my family travelled over to it. And um, even all the like, it was a really big team that year, uh, and everybody was just going crazy. Like we had a good chance; we came away with three medals in the end. And uh, it was one of the last races on the Sunday and like the last day, so most people were kind of finished. So they're all watching and stuff. It was just, it was insane. Like I have such fond memories of it. Um, they really like cemented that this this is what I want to do. This is all I want to do. Like, uh, like I went did college and the whole lot but like even going through college I was like oh I just want to run like I want to get this out of the way don't want to work don't want to do anything I just want to run so um, I'm glad that that's what I get to do now and I'm blessed to kind of have to support my parents to just kind of live at home and train to the best of my abilities and see what comes out of sport like. Definitely tell us a little bit about going full-time in running you know you mentioned you, you kind of just wanted to get out of college while you were in there we'll touch on, on on college a little bit as well a little bit later on because um you did study um rehabilitation athletics therapy in um well what used to be known as as it carlo how does that play into you know i suppose you you performing to your best and staying injury free does it does it come into into your running at all Oh, for sure. Like, it was absolutely, it worked out very well that that's what I ended up doing in college. Um, Like, it's a pretty diverse course, so I've got a, like, a decent background now in strength and conditioning, uh, like, different kinds of, like, you know, uh, physical therapy, massage therapy and all that. So, it's definitely helped with my own knowledge of my own body and staying healthy and just a general understanding of, like, sports physiology. So, like, um there'll be a lot of back and forth between me and joe uh when we're sorting out training and stuff so it's nice to have an opinion and feel i'm not just like talking crap and i'm <laughs> like giving an opinion like a worthwhile opinion um and i i think that suits me very well because i like to know what's going on with my training and stuff like if joe just was sending me on you know weeks of training at a time and there is no there's no give or take or I was just doing it without knowing why I'm doing it like that would kill me like so um it was good for that and it's just it was, like I said uh, it's really good for keeping my myself healthy um keeping on top of stuff in the gym and, and of course like I got a degree out of it in the end which is great it'll, it'll be used when I uh, retire from running I'm sure <laughs> definitely definitely and that process then between leaving college and, and going full-time running what did that look like yeah so to be honest carlo were, were really good to me um like they helped wherever they could like they let me defer my work placement in the end to the following year so i could kind of spread things out and train as as much as i wanted um sorry what was the question about Just, oh yeah between finishing and going full-time yeah so, yeah 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 because of that there wasn't like a massive change like uh i was commuting for the four years so like obviously i had a bit more time in my hands i didn't need to travel up and down to carlo um but like i'd basically been training the same amount 
I think it's just my, my recovery you now. I have more time to recover, and I can, like, if I'm absolutely wrecked, I can like nap during the day if need to be, or like hop into I have the recovery boots here and stuff like that. So it's more so just having more time to to get prepped for sessions and stuff like that. I'm still doing the same amount of training, but I'm probably just absorbing it better now because I've more time in between them. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and and uh, that has clearly paid off, like we seen last weekend, and and what's to come uh, for the rest of your season. Uh, let let let's talk about this year, maybe instead of this season as a whole. You were over in Istanbul for the um, the indoors, European indoors. You you weren't compared to last weekend and and the rest of the season to come. I suppose you weren't delighted with with, with how you performed that indoors. Uh, no, to be honest, uh, my indoor season didn't go too well at all. Um, I got injured in, I think it was maybe December or maybe around Christmas time or whatever it was. I missed three weeks, but um, that was just when training was really getting going from the, the winter block, you know, that kind of way. So yeah. I, I felt a lot of the indoor season, I was just playing catch up and trying to, there was like a B standard I needed to run for the, uh, to make Istanbul. So I was kind of chasing that, chasing that, and uh, that was taking the priority. And I just kind of scraped it at the last chance uh, of running it. So it was great that I got to go to Istanbul and like I got over there. I, I gave it as good a, a crack as I could have, but I definitely wasn't in the shape I needed to be. Um, it's just the way things panned out. Like I knew if I could stay healthy between Istanbul and outdoors, it would go a lot better and uh, kind of went away on camp straight after Istanbul and uh, got fit, slimmed up a bit and was in just much better general shape coming into the outdoor season. Tell us a little bit about because personally, I I'd be a cross country runner and and the track as well. To between indoors and and outdoor season, kind of while that cross country season is is going on, how how does your training differ during that period and that winter training to I suppose the depths of indoor and outdoor season? Yeah, so I suppose between indoors and outdoors, it would look quite similar to my winter training. There's maybe just a little bit more intensity because you're like you're not too far away from racing in like you know march april but um yeah like my volume says pretty consistently all year round like i'd max out at maybe 60 65 but then uh like right now like this week i still ran like 58 miles this week so i'm not far off uh, like a race week of course it drops like a good bit like uh a standard race week's probably 40 45 miles uh session wise like i get some sort of aerobic work in every week i get speed work in every week and then the intensity just based is based around races so if i'm racing in a week there won't be any real hard session and if i'm not we'll probably have one hard session uh but yeah like our our, our training is very simple it's just um get your aerobic work done uh, get strong in the gym get fast on the track with like real short speed and then uh, sprinkle in the kind of stuff, stuff in the middle, middle like, like your a15 pace stuff. stuff so yeah so it's still it's more not as such the 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 season than than it is i suppose the racing schedule yeah exactly like like our weeks don't vary that much at all basically throughout the year like maybe there's a bit more of an aerobic emphasis in the winter, but like for me, like I'm a lot more 800 specific than a lot of the group. Like a lot of our group would be kind of 815 guys or uh, maybe even some like 5k cross country guys. So like I, I'd get the aerobic session in with them once a week, but the rest of the week is like like fairly intensive. Like like it, like I said, if I'm not racing, the weeks are basically the same kind of stimulus all year round yeah yeah uh, get you because that's that's something I always, I always thought was during you know cross country season people that wouldn't even race cross country and would would have a few indoor races here and there kind of what they're what they're up to but um it, it's it's interesting to hear that your your training is is more solicited around around races rather than the the time of year which i suppose come come hand in hand in in a sense and then your your season moved on from your your indoor performance to to your outdoor, which obviously last year you became the 
you, you, you won the national title in, in the 800 metres. But before that, you won in the 800 metres in the Martin Games. Tell us a little bit about that race and, and how that built your confidence going into the nationals. Yeah, so um, the season had been going pretty well. Um, I hadn't been racing spectacularly, but I've been racing really consistently, like around kind of the 146 low mark. Um, and then we figured I'd enough uh, points in my world ranking to go to Budapest. So we said for the last two races of the season uh, before World Champs, which would have been Morton and Nationals, we were just going to race to win. Um, regardless of if the race went out fast, went out slow, it didn't matter. Um, Joe said, look, just conserve as much energy as possible, focus on closing hard, um, and basically treat it like the first round of a, a championship. Like we're just practicing, like doing your best to be towards the front of the field at the end of the race, basically. So that's what I did in Morton. Uh, weather was fairly rough all day. Now we kind of got away with it. Uh, during, like it was windy all right uh, in the 800 but it, it had stopped raining thankfully so yeah we went out with a decent click but nothing crazy and I just sat in the pack chilled for literally 700 meters and uh, closed hard ended up taking the win which is great and then just went out and tried to do the same thing again in nationals and was able to pull it off again so uh, yeah I've definitely learned a lot from even just not think, worrying about the clock and going into the races and just focusing on position and look at the end of the day whoever crosses the finish line first is going to run the fastest time anyway so probably should have been doing a bit more of it during the year but yeah. uh, at least I've learned a lesson before going over to the championships like which is the main thing definitely definitely how how does it take the pressure off going into a race now and you can kind of just see how it feels rather than you know focusing and worrying about trying to get a get a time for for situations like the world championships yeah it actually does to be honest because uh i was going over to these races in france and like you're the the pace you requested is like really really hot and you're thinking right i gotta get out on this and like if no one's going to do it uh, like if no one else is going to do it i'm going to have to front run it's like i need to do need to go through in this time to make the uh time fast and stuff and like you're sacrificing the win and you know you're sacrificing the win to try and make the, the race fast uh, so like if I was to go back and rerun two or three of them races I, I would just sit and chill and uh, try close hard and the season probably would have been a little bit more successful but um, like, like, like I said it's good to know that now and it'll be something I'll probably try to do a lot more of next season uh, and I think because of it, if I'm fit and healthy, the next season should be even more successful. Definitely, the times the, the times will come hand in hand with with win, winning the races as well. Exactly. This this year was your second national title over the 800 meters. Tell us about the first national title. We spoke about your first Irish Fest. Tell us a little bit about your your first national title. Did it, did it differ in terms of how it felt afterwards and getting that medal and getting that title or did it just feel just as good um, yeah so my first national title was uh, it wasn't last year it was the year before and um, I went into the race racing all the usual guys and then there's like an, an addition to Luke McCann the, the 1500 specialist so it's very similar to this year that you had all the usual guys and then the addition of uh, Andrew Cosgren. So, um, yeah, I would have, like two years ago, I would have considered myself the favourite going in. Uh, and I felt a bit of pressure with that, but like nothing ridiculous. Like, I don't think anybody else was putting pressure on me. It was just like uh, internal pressure I was putting on myself. So I wanted to go out and win uh, for like my family and stuff. And um, yeah, it was a similar enough race to this uh this year's championship except i left myself with a lot of work to do with 100 to go uh two years ago and i only caught luke on the line with about five yards to go so i i didn't even know if i'd won it when we came over the line we we're kind of waiting for the, the official results to come up so uh, it definitely didn't feel as sweet because it almost felt like i just got away with one as for this year i won uh with a bit of a gap and like i knew with maybe 50 yards to go i was going to win so I felt it was a lot sweeter this year that like 
I had almost proven I deserved a win as opposed to just like snuck it off somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. You, had, you mentioned that you had Andrew Coskrin in the final with you. He's been having a great season as well. And of course, he's heading over to Budapest for the 1500 metres. Were, were you a little bit thrown off when, when you seen him on the starting line for the 800? Um, yes and no. I would say yes because like he's broken new ground this year. He's ran 330. Like that's world class, and we don't have that many world class middle distance guys. Um, like I'm running 145 at the end of the day. That's not world class. Now I'm probably in better shape, which is great. But like it's all well and good saying that until you do it. Yeah. But then the other side of the thing is to run 330 nowadays, and the way them guys train, like you're banging out 100 plus miles a week, and it's just that highly aerobic that I figured he wouldn't have the the wheels kind of for a, a quick 800 like I figure he would have ran a quicker 800 maybe two years ago than he would right now even though he's in much better 15 shape so um, like, like maybe I was just telling myself that to kind of boost my own confidence but um, yeah I figured if we we're out hot it would have suited me better and uh, thankfully he took it out at a decent clip uh, and I feel that kind of race suits me, so it, it kind of worked out well in that regards too. And there was the absence of Mark English, who's heading over to Budapest in for the eight hundred meters as well. Um, you know, Mark, Mark is over the past couple of years has been a a, a big name in terms of Irish eight hundred meter running. Did, did did that boost your confidence even further heading in, heading into the final, or would would that have even crossed your mind at all? Um, to be honest, I would have loved if he was in it because, like, like you want to race against all the top guys. Same with uh, my training partner, Keen McPhillips. He's ran 145 as well this year, but had to pull out due to illness, unfortunately. So, like, ideally, I would have all them guys in the final and just make it an absolute spectacle. Like, I think it would be unreal. But, um, yeah, like, Mark's unreal. You know, like, Mark has four European medals, and I'd reckon chop my hand off for one European medal in my career, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like he's just he's so good. Um now, yeah, I, I think I'm in really, really good nick this year. So it would have been nice to have him in the final and give him a real real good run for his money. But look, you can only beat who's there on the day and thankfully I did, so I won't complain. Exactly. No, definitely. And um as well you never know, you 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 might you might see each other uh, throughout the, the rounds in the uh in the eight hundred in Budapest. Yeah, very true. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so you place you place second in that area. You got your second national title this year. Obviously, placing first between now and and last weekend. How how have things you know looked in in terms of 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 your training? And um, have have things been really exciting over the past week? I suppose. Um, on just just under a week now. Um, how how have things? I suppose change. What have you been up to over the past week, especially with the world championships coming up? Yeah, so it's been a pretty fun week. You know, um, like a lot of people in the town and stuff would have watched the race, so getting good congratulations and stuff, which is nice. And then a couple of days ago, the team was announced like officially for world champs. So like, obviously, like when you tick all the boxes and stuff, you're like, oh, like I'm going. But at the same time, it's nice to get official word and stuff. So that was great. Uh, training wise yeah um, like uh, w- it was about three weeks between nationals and worlds so myself and Joe split it into basically two 10 day blocks the first one's a little bit more uh, aerobic higher in volume so we have a week of that done there now kind of had a hard session yesterday on Saturday and I'll have another hard one Wednesday before I head away and then once I head away uh We'll drop down the volume for them 10 days and focus a bit more on the kind of speed side of things. Uh, we'll hit a real hard 800 meter session. I think we're planning on doing that Sunday. Don't have the details yet, but it'll be something that hurts anyway. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that'll be just over a week out from the first round. So between that session and uh, the first race, it'll mainly be just recovery and a couple of light sessions you know, keep the engine running, uh, keep the speed ticking over and uh, travel in then as fresh as possible and give, give the first round a good crack. Best case scenario, heading over to, to world championship, uh, to a world, to your first world championships, best case scenario in terms of your your fitness, your confidence coming off 
um, the, the national championships and how you think it's going to differ from the, the European championships and the European stage that you competed on previously? Yeah, so to be honest, the European 800 meter running is really strong at the moment as well. So I don't think there will be a crazy change. Like, of course, at the very top end, you've got a lot more like there's a couple of Kenyan guys and Algerian guys who are just top, top guys who'd run like 143, 144 any day of the week. So you know you're going to have one or two of them in your heat. But um, like the guys I'm racing on the circuit week in, week out, a lot of them are going to be there as well. And like they're they're not uh, unbeatable by any means. So yeah, the plan is to go into the first round and ideally get out of it. Um, like that would be great to make a world semi and then race to the best of my ability. Like you never know what's going to happen on the day, to be honest. Um, like it's all well and good saying I'd love to make the final or I'd love to make the semi, but as long as I race to the best of my abilities on the day, whatever the result is, it is like. Yeah, definitely. But like making your 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 first world championships, well, I suppose you you mentioned earlier, you know, you go into a into a European championship. So you're going into a race and in your mind says you you deserve to be there and of course you deserve to, to, to be there on on a world championship level because you know you're national champion and, and, and you ran the time. Do you think there'll be much of a, a mindset shift there, maybe in terms of nerves as well? Um I don't think so, to be honest, because uh I kind of went through all that at the European outdoors last year. And um I just got a bit too I don't know if you'd call it excited or whatever, but I got a bit too uh, antsy before the race and um made a move I wouldn't characteristically make and it came and it came back to bite me in the ass basically the last hundred meters. So um I definitely think the last kind of month of racing has just helped me have a lot more of a relaxed kind of state of mind going into the races and I'm just planning on going in and doing the same thing again. Like it doesn't matter who's in my race or if I'm racing like some big names or something, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go out and save as much as I can for the last 100 or 150 and try close hard and get that auto queue uh, for the semi. And then if I make the semi, I'll just try to do the same thing again. Like I'm not going to change what's not broken, you know. Last few races have shown me what my strength is in the 800 and it's just basically closing hard. So, I'm going to do my best to do that in every round I get into over there. Definitely. And the the World Championships, have have they been the, the main focus throughout the season this year? Um, was the a second national title the main focus? Kind of, obviously, the, the World Championships must have been at the back of your mind throughout the year anyway. Yeah, to be honest, the qualifying for the World Champs was the main goal. Um, like, we'd been keeping an eye on the, the World Rankings and stuff throughout the year and making sure I was getting into a couple of races that were on the the Continental Tour to pick up some bonus points and things like that. Um, and again, I'd say that the, the main goal next year will be Paris as well, to get out. And if I don't run the auto standard, to make sure I've accumulated as many points and have as high a world ranking as possible to hopefully make it there as well. Yeah, that, that that's actually one of my questions i suppose is the world championships and then how how that differs for for your goals and, and your aims to, to to head over to the paris and, and in terms of what i suppose is is the highest level for you would 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 paris stand taller than than the the, the world championships this year uh personally for me it would uh especially because i've never been to an olympics i think making an olympics in your career is just like unbelievable to be able to call yourself an olympian would be class so yeah i'm gonna like put all my eggs in one basket next year like i'm not gonna focus on indoors really or anything uh like if i'm in shape i run a couple of races but like there's world indoors i'm not gonna worry about that uh everything will be geared towards paris next year and um do do my best to get there i think it'll it'll be a career crowning it'd be unbelievable definitely definitely um we know we you never know what what might happen and and how fast you might run over in the world championships. That's the the next big thing. So I suppose Paris can can take the back seat at the moment. Oh yeah, for the next few weeks anyway, it's not a, a priority. Like I'm gonna focus on this world champs and 
try and make it as far as possible. If I get like if I run fast over there, that's great. If I don't, it's not a big deal. Um, like we'll shut down the season now after this World Champs, take a couple of weeks or an hour, and then uh, get ready for the winter season with the uh, all eyes on Paris. Then definitely, definitely. And a lot of the athletes I was talking to at the weekend that we're we're heading over to training camps. You 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 stayed at home for for the most part. Tell us tell us. Obviously, you're heading over to the to the um holding holding camp, but you know for the most part you've you've kind of stayed at home and can and continued your training after the uh after the national championships like Andrew Coskran and people like Brian Fay as well headed straight over to places like like Spain I suppose talk us through that I suppose the process of, of staying at home until getting over to the holding camp. Yeah, so uh, this year I went on like a two week camp to try get sharp for indoors and then I went. Uh, for like three and a half weeks after indoors, I went up to altitude for the first time to try that out. But yeah, I haven't been away since. Uh, I've been racing all season, and then really this uh, three week block now would have been the only opportunity to get away. But um, look, myself and Joe are happy enough. We we knew the the holding camp was an option, uh, and there is only whatever it was eight or nine days between nationals and heading there. So like we weren't too pushed. Um, there's only one or two kind of sessions I'd be doing on the track. So uh, as long as we got half decent weather for them two days, the rest of the, the week didn't matter. You know yourself, you get out and do easy runs and the, the rain and the wind, no problem. Like so. No, so it, it wasn't. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking because the turnover between, like you mentioned there, nationals and the uh, the world championships isn't even that that crazy in terms of how how many hard sessions you'd you'd get done at altitude but like you said as well if it's not broken don't fix it if everything's working here you know you you compete in the nationals against a top class field you, you even you competed in the morton games uh, on a on a as well as international field as well and and you came out as a champion in both of them races so it'd be a case of, of settling into just settling into the holding camp yeah exactly um no yeah, we're happy enough now like the work is 99 percent done you can't get that much better now in two weeks uh once i keep on top of everything and stay healthy i know i'll be going into the races in good shape so um yeah all's good there now we're raring to go definitely and 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 before we went on air you told me the schedule of the 800 meters um specifically for for everyone listening at home, do you, do you want to just I suppose give it an update if anyone hasn't seen the 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 full schedule on the World Athletics website? Yeah, of course. So uh, the championships are starting the nineteenth of August, and then the eight hundred is on the twenty second, twenty fourth, and twenty sixth. All of them are uh, evening races. Uh, so I'll be out the twenty second uh, at some point. I think it's about twenty past seven or something local time. Perfect, perfect. Well, we'll uh, be keeping everyone up to date on on the on the schedule and uh, making sure everyone at home is is tuning in to your a hundred meters. I can't wait to watch you and and the rest of of course the Irish athletes heading over to Budapest. Um, John, I do appreciate you coming on. I know everything since last weekend has has um I suppose been been a bit a bit crazy. All everything at the moment is really really exciting for you heading over to Budapest. So I do really appreciate you coming on. Oh, no problem, Kelly. Thanks for having me. Uh, really good crack and all the best with the future podcast episodes. Cheers. Thanks so much. And for uh, everyone watching and listening at home as well, I do really appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.